What's going on, everyone? I am Josh with 625 Media, and it's that time of the week again. It is... It's the gun show. It's Workout Wednesday. And this week, wanted to go a little bit lighter, but something a little more challenging. Um, we're going to look at some practice scripts that are of fairy tales and also combine some voiceover techniques that cause us to change our style in the middle of the script. Okay, so we'll be a narrator for most of it, but then when it comes to the main character, we have to change our voice. We haven't done that yet. Will I succeed? <laughs> My feeling is not at first, but I'm going to get set up and then we're going to work out. All right, so we're set. I've got my scripts. So with these scripts that I've found on Voices.com, as always, they have some direction and some art direction uh, to guide us through what we're supposed to read, how we're supposed to read it. So I've got three different scripts here that I'm going to read through and just kind of give my thoughts about not necessarily the script itself. It's not about judging what's on the page. It's about judging where we are as voice artists, okay? So let's take a look at the first script here. And I do believe it's a 30-second uh, narration. Now, these are fairy tales. So... If we take a look at the the direction or the uh, or the uh, client notes here, so the client is an audiobook publisher, and it's the Firelight Fairy Book. The voice age, okay, so they have a voice age, young or uh, child, young adult, middle age, and senior. So any age, I'm one of those ages. Uh, gender, male or female, I'm one of those things. Great. Job description. Uh, this job is for an audiobook publisher reading a classic fairy tale for children. Art direction. These passages are from a fairy tale titled The Queen of Lantern Land. The audience is children, so keep this in mind when reading. You should take on the style of a narrator and read it in an enticing and entertaining way to captivate a young audience. We'll see if I get there. Uh, should be read in a whimsical way. In the 60-second script, which is the second script we'll read, you should differentiate the character's voice from the narrator's using partially voiced style of narration. So what I like about this is if um, I don't know what partially voiced narration style of narration is, there's a link here that I can click, and they give me a bunch of definitions. So that's great. So I know that partially voiced means that I'm going to change my voice for those main characters. Okay. Um, other than that, they have a style, which is narrator, language, English, accent, U.S. General American, Gen Am. Okay. So if they want a different type of accent, it'll be listed here. Gotta hydrate. Okay. So let's take a look at this 30 second script. All right. So I'm going to. I'm going to try to read this. Now, it's a narration of a kid's story, so I need to be a little light um, when I read it. I need to be engaging and whimsical. All right. Let's see what we can do. So this is the 30-second narration. Ready? Here we go. Once upon a time, the king's youngest son began... F <laughs> began... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even made it through yet. Once upon a time, the king's youngest son became filled with the desire to go abroad and see the world. He got his father's permission to leave on an adventure, kissed his parents goodbye, and mounted his black horse and galloped away down the high road. Soon the gray towers of the old castle, in which he was born, disappeared behind him. So I got through it, but there's definitely some phrasing issues there. Um, I like the voice, but I feel like um, I feel like without any preparation, you can definitely tell that uh, you don't have all the phrasing right. So <coughs> lesson one here, you definitely want to make sure that you're reading through it. So let's try this one again. 
Once upon a time, the king's youngest son became... Uh, wow. Once upon a time, the king's youngest son became filled with the desire to go abroad and see the world. He got his father's permission to leave on an adventure, kissed his parents goodbye, mounted his black horse, and galloped away down the high road. Soon, the gray towers of the old castle, in which he had born, disappeared behind him. So sometimes it's hard to judge yourself, and you can... I say I'm my hardest critic, but if you feel like you did a good job, it's hard to be critical. I felt like the energy was good. I felt like the voice was good. Um, but there was definitely still some phrasing issues. And um, maybe getting confident in in what I was saying as I went along and not keeping the same kind of rhythm or pace. But the energy was great. So let's move on to the 60-second script. All right, so it's it's really a continuation of the first script. It's like further down the story. So that way um, we have something different. All right, so this is the script where I need to break off um, at some point and have a voice for the, the main character, or it's the prince in this situation. All right, so we already have our narrator voice picked out. We just need to pick out a voice for the prince. Let's see if I can do it on the fly. <sighs> All right. 60 second narration. The prince journeyed on, spending days traveling and his nights in little wayside inns. Till one day, he found himself at the heart of the Adamant Mountains. The great red granite crags of the surrounding peak rose out of the gleaming snow like ugly fingers, and the slopes of giant glaciers sparkled in the sun like torrents of diamonds. The prince sat down by some stunted trees, whose tops had been broken off a long time ago by an avalanche, and began to eat the bit of bread and cheese that he had stored in his pocket. Meanwhile, his black horse ate the grass, which grew here and there along the mountain path. And, as the prince sat there, in the bright sun and the silence of the mountains, became aware of a low, continuous roaring. There must be a waterfall nearby. <laughs> wow, I should have planned that out before I started. The prince journeyed on, spending days traveling and his nights in little wayside inns, till one day he found himself in the heart of the Adamant Mountains. The great red granite crags of the surrounding peaks rose out of the gleaming snow like ugly fingers, and the slopes of giant... <laughs> wow. The prince sat down by some stunted trees whose tops had been broken off a long time ago by an avalanche and began to eat the bit of bread and cheese he had stored in his pocket. Meanwhile, his black horse ate the grass, which grew here and there along the mountain path. And as the prince sat there, in the bright sun and the silence of the mountains, he became aware of a low, continuous roaring. There must be a waterfall nearby, said the prince to himself. I'll go and see it. That prince is kind of a kind of a meager, weak little prince, proving his manhood. All right, so the energy in that second take was 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 good, uh, but I think maybe I got too caught up in the energy and keeping that energy that I didn't use it appropriately. So I'm saying things like, and I think this goes actually more toward the first take, but the line, his black horse ate the grass, which grew here and there along the mountain path. Not much exciting about that, but it sets the scene. And a horse eating grass along a mountain path, the prince sitting there eating bread and cheese, it's not necessarily this high high impact climax of the story it's more of a setting the tone it's 
things are settling down. They feel like they have this sense of security where they can sit and eat and relax and not worry about anything. Then all of a sudden, they hear this roaring. But that roaring, we think, is a waterfall. So I think energy is good, but we need to make sure that if this were a real gig, we're reading it in a way beforehand that we understand what what the emotion really is. So while that energy may work for like a battle scene where the prince is at that, I don't know, coming of age, kill the dragon type thing, that the energy that was used here might work, but this is more of a the prince sat down by the stunted trees, whose tops had been broken off a long time ago by an avalanche, and began to eat the bit of bread and cheese he had stored in his pocket. Meanwhile, the black horse ate the grass, which grew here and there along the mountain path. And as the prince sat there in the bright sun and the silence of the mountains, he became aware of a low, continuous roaring. There must be a waterfall nearby said the prince to himself. I'll go and see it. <laughs> That's a better prince voice, I think. So it's clear that energy and emotion are tied together. And if you don't see that as you're reading it and you're not feeling that as you actually listen to the words you're saying, um, then maybe it's time that you go back and reread that because there's a definite difference in how that second paragraph feels when you tone it down but still keep it's hard to explain you still have an energy about you and you're still keeping things up and and moving uh, but the energy is much different it's more calming because again the way i interpret this is that there's a sense of security at this point they're taking a rest they're at a point where they can take a rest so let's move on to the third and final script for our fairy tales. All right, so this is a different story. Um, it's from a uh, from an audiobook publisher, The Princess and the Goblin. There's actually two scripts for this, but I'm just going to read the male one. Uh, job description, uh, audiobook publisher, uh, the voice age, middle age, gender male. I am both of those things. Art direction. Uh, I'm going to kind of to uh, skip around here a little bit. Uh, fairy tale titled The Princess and the Goblin. The audience is children, so keep that in mind. You should take on the style of a narrator and read it in an enticing, entertaining way to captivate a young audience. Same as before. Uh, should be read in a whimsical way, and also you should differentiate the character's voice from that of the narrator. The author of the book was Scottish, but we are open to hearing from any voice talent who speaks English regardless of accent. So I'm not going to try to do um, Scottish accent because I I need to work on that greatly. <laughs> uh, but the style is rugged but sincere. Um, it's English and it's any accent. So we need kind of a middle-aged, rugged type voice uh, to read this 60-second script. So, let's get to it. Perhaps my readers may be wondering what the goblins could be about. Working all night long, seeing they never carried up the ore and sold it. But when I have informed them concerning what Curdy learned that, very, that next night, they will be able to understand... For Curdy had been determined, if his father would permit him, to, re to remain there alone this night. And that for two reasons. First, he wanted to get extra wages in order, to, in order that he might buy a very warm red petticoat for his mother, who had just begun to complain of the cold of the mountain, the cold of the mountain air sooner than usual this autumn. And second... He had just a faint glimmering hope of finding what those goblins were all... <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop there. Um, that's my interpretation of Rugged and Sincere. Um, I have a feeling that the client would give me some notes like, um, yeah, that's just more gruff than, than Rugged and Sincere. Um, but I'm going to go with it, maybe tweak it the next time around. The second thing I noticed about this already is that the wording is very awkward and it's not necessarily incorrect but it's awkward to what we're used to um there's there's hardly any periods here <laughs> there's a lot of commas uh colons semicolons 
Uh, we haven't even gotten to the end of it. That was about halfway or a little over halfway through. So let's try this again, keeping that in mind. Um, again, this is another example where we want to read through this before we get we get into it. We really want to make sure we understand the word uh, or the words, the word order. And I have a feeling that we're going to want to understand emotion as well, but we haven't done enough with it to do that yet. Perhaps my readers may be wondering what the goblins could be about, working all night long, seeing they never carry up the ore and sold it. But when I have informed them concerning what Curdy learned that very night, they will be able to understand. For Curdy had been determined, if his father would permit him, to retain, to retain, to retain a lawyer and emancipate himself. For Curdy had determined, if his father would permit it, to remain there alone this night. And that for two reasons. First, he wanted to get extra wages in order that he might buy a very warm red petticoat for his mother, who had begun to complain of the cold of the mountain air sooner than usual this autumn. And second, he had just a faint glimmering hope of finding out what the goblins were about under his window the night before. When he told his father, he made no objections, for he had great confidence in his boy's courage and resources. I'm sorry I can't stay with you, said Peter. But I want to go and pay the, <laughs> but I want to go and pay the parson a visit this evening. And besides, I've got a bit of a headache all day. I've I've had a bit of a headache all day. <laughs> so, it might be helpful to understand who Peter is in this situation because the way I read it, Curdy is the son and Peter is definitely not the father. I mean, maybe Peter's the father. I don't know. I don't know. For Curdy had determined. <laughs> so this is this is definitely an example uh, where we, again, we want to make sure we understand what the wording is. We want to make sure we understand how they're ordered. We want to make sure we understand who is who in this story. And I have a feeling that if we knew more of this story, um, we would understand that Peter is this person and Curdy is this person. Um, but that is definitely a good script for me to come back to and read again and again because it forces me to quit saying things the way that I would say them and read them as the author intended them to be said. So I never thought I would be just reading random fairy tale stories at this age just to be reading them unless, you know, you're reading a bedtime story or something. But I thought those scripts were 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 good reads in the fact that it forces us to create a persona for the narrator, also create a persona for our character. But finally, I almost said also again, and it's going to be a lot of also's. But finally, it forces us to really understand the scene that's being set as a narrator because our energy, our emotion, our approach, our phrasing is going to affect how the listener pictures the scene. That first that first 30 second script or I'm sorry, the second the second script, the second the uh, 60 second script uh, where we're setting the mountain scene where the prince is hearing the waterfall. Um, depending on what kind of energy we put forward there, I mean, you could picture maybe a snowy top mountain with like lava pouring out if it was the first way I read it. But if you came at it with a calm but upbeat energy, you can, you can start to feel that sense of security that it's a resting point, you know, just kind of a lull in the action, but there's something right around the corner. Along with that, it also forces us to read things the way they're written. Uh, we're used to saying things a certain way. Um, I know that I say things differently than you say things. And in that third script, that author, while he might be a great author, writes things in a way that are totally foreign to how we actually speak or how I actually speak. So there's a lot of factors involved, and it helps us practice being aware of all those things. So I'll probably look for more fairy tale like stories to read. Um, 
hopefully in in the uh, in the Creative Commons. Uh, but I think those, that's a good exercise in um, really deciding what the author's message is and what the emotion of that message is. So I hope you enjoyed this week's workout Wednesday. I certainly did. That was that was fun, even though I messed up more than I succeeded. But that's okay. That's what practice is for. Um, but if you want to see this and more things like this, please make sure you're following us on all the social media. 625 Media, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Mix. I don't know. Make your own social media a platform and, and I'll create a profile and you can follow me there. <laughs> all right. So for 625 Media from the Attic, I am Josh. I'm going to go turn the air conditioner on because it is hot up here. I'll see you later.